You look good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Look fantastic. What's up, Food Podcast with Felipe Esparza and Rodrigo Torres. Rodrigo Torres. What's up, Food? Chilling. Though. We have guests today. Like, yeah, showed man. up right away, man. I know they you brought me punctual as hell. Dude. Forty yeah. minutes later, oh, no. or come in at the last minute. Couldn't find parking. That's or white like people every... punctuality, man. <laughs> <laughs> or that the other guest that just crawled out of here while we we're talking. <laughs> What was his name? Swartzen. Yeah, Eric Swartzen. Uh, Grandma's boy. Nick Swartzen? Gra- Nick Swartzen. Yeah. Wait, yeah. what do you mean he crawled out? Like, we were doing the interview, and then he goes, Felipe, man, I'm still out. Oh, man. Uh, like 15 I'm get, minor I, 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 have to, I have to go. The night before. And he crawls out. Uh, he really crawled out in left. Unless that was a good acting role. Did though, he huh? crawl out into his car? Yeah. No, his <laughs> yeah. Uber. Yeah, he looked like he was hating it, though. He got up at around 10 in the morning. He showed up here. But he showed up. Yeah, yeah, he came. He made it here at noon. Yeah. And crawled out? Yeah. And crawled out around 45 minutes later. Creeped it, in and crawled out. If you creep in, crawl out, you might as well call in and say, <laughs> I'm not going to make it. I know, huh? <laughs> But that was, like, responsible, though, because he oh, parted yeah. the night before and took an Uber and called and in. And was only two hours late. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, man. Not like Joe Diaz, man. When I used to book him at the Wild Coyotes for 50 bucks, Felipe, I'm fucking lost. I'm over well, here off Lancashire like- fighting ninjas. You got a good, uh, no offense to you, Rodrigo, what but happened? you got a very good Joey Diaz impression. Yeah, his is better, though. <laughs> Do it, bro. There's like different Joey Diaz. I'm oh, there go you in go. There. <laughs> I'm not like saying, this, this motherfucker, bro. He had three arms on one shoulder. He was like a fucking angel. <laughs> and then you get the hyped up one, right? Yeah, there he is. The Felipe one with the trans people. All right, I'm going to go back to my little fucking shell. I'm going to talk to the engineer for a little while. Yeah. That's but, another fool that... um. We, I used to watch him on. Uh, I used to follow what he does. Actually, I follow what you did too, and what you guys did. Okay, well, so and you what? just follow. People. No, like when now uh, <laughs> we were on last comic standing, like the last day, I saw Natasha, uh, Natasha with a bag of clothes. Said, Felipe, they're selling all the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I told you to sell clothes. No, they were selling our our our, 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 wardrobe? our, our wardrobe for last oh. comic standing. Then I said, fuck it, give me a suit. <laughs> dude, that was some tight suits right there, dude. Wait, yeah. you won last comic. Yeah, I won. I, that I the helped, year she judged? I, I was responsible for that. Yes, you were, man. I was like, I mean, I was a part of you winning. You were part of the Felipe family. I was part of the Felipe fan club. Yeah, she original an OG, OG Felipe fan club. <laughs> hey, don't remind him of that. <laughs> no, but it was weird because I thought, like, when, when, when I did the audition, you know, because you were a judge, great judge, by the way, mm-hmm. you know, you were real. You didn't kiss ass, you know, like, man, if, if your person sucked, he sucked. Uh-huh. What did my manager tell me to say? No. Yeah, man, like, it was good. I think an, an, another good judge, if they would have a judge that would be honest, like, to really tell the comedian how horrible they were, <laughs> would be um, Greg Nick Pola or Jamie Masada. Oh, re- Jamie Masada, but really? But Greg Geraldo was like that, Yeah, he too. was good. Oh, Wait, man. Was I, I said no to you? But I thought you said yes on the audition, because Felipe, she, you said, I love Felipe, at the audition, you know? When there were no people, uh-huh. but then on camera, I said she said no. I was like, "What? If they cut this and redo it, or what?" Oh. Natasha, unless speak, they manipulated it some way. Speak to that. Why did no, you? But, you know, why did you say no to our beloved host? I don't remember anything about that <laughs> job. It was I, a blur, Rasa. <laughs> but I will say that sometimes what would happen was the only thing I came in there thinking was that I wanted to make sure. I felt good about everything I said. So maybe you, if you said something that I thought was too hacky, at that moment, I might have said no, just because that was the only basis I was judging things on. <laughs> like, I just was trying to be true to myself. I remember when there were comedians that were, that were not pushed, who didn't know Nata- who Natasha was. Uh-huh. They were upset. I said, well, what happened, bro? You didn't know who she was. I knew who the three people were. Oh, okay. I know some you're guy out of the was business. like... You're, 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 you're performing in the wrong places. Yeah, if you're, if you're in the mix and know who, who's who amongst the community. I felt like Slumdog Millionaire on that show. <laughs> <laughs> like the little boy. Because I had history with everybody. You know what I could say? And I had history everybody. with everybody except Andy. No, some Kindler. guy told me he was like, big fan of you, Geraldo, big fan of Kindler, Nancy, I don't know who you are. Oh, <laughs> fuck that guy. I remember that guy. That guy was an asshole. There was a bunch of dicks on that show. <laughs> I don't it? know, but the producer still calls me Nancy. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy. Yeah, man. Because, see, I know um, Greg Geraldo because I've opened for him when he Back was in the day, right? headlining and Gene Pompa with Petri. So, yeah, and, he's good, huh? Or he was and good. I know you because I think I threw up in your room. <laughs> at at uh, the Montreal Comedy Festival. Is that true? Maybe that's why I always have a weird vibe. Yeah, <laughs> it was 
<laughs> I, I felt like I'm <laughs> dropping there. It was me. It was Jasper Red. It was, it was the lady from the, the San Francisco, the one that booked the punchline. Molly. Molly. And it was in my room? Yeah, it was like you were connected to my room and Jay Larson's. I think they were all together. And we had like this. Oh, you guys were new faces together? New faces, yes. Oh, okay. We were new faces together? We were new faces together. Okay. 2000, it's funny. They 2005. Put, they put the new faces Damn. in like the every single comedian at the entire festival stays in the Hyatt, except the new faces. They stay in this fucking residence in <laughs> like 15 minutes away. It's so bad. And then they have a little, apparently there's a puke channel where Felipe can come into your room. <laughs> no, Wait, so well, did I get mad? No, you were cool. Sounds like something I would get mad No, you about. were cool actually. No, 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 no. You were cool because I was about to like, whoa, 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 whoa. And you brought me a bucket. It was an ice bucket. I, an ice bucket. That was the original Wait, ice bucket challenge. Too? I told her. You, <laughs> you brought me an ice bucket, and then I went, after that, I told everybody I'm sorry, and I left. <laughs> I, I feel left like with the I don't ice bucket. remember anything that I've said or did my whole entire life. Right, you don't have any memories before the age of 15, right? <laughs> <laughs> we also got Moshe right here. What's up? What's Catcher. up? Oh, what's Who's up, fool? Uh, I know, guess I should Rod say that, Rodrigo's right? also a, a school teacher, by the way. Oh, cool. I was a substitute teacher for a year. Where so, where at? Uh, Alvord Unified School District in Riverside, California. And how you much live in Riverside? Time, how much, yeah, how much comedy there. time did you get from that year? Well, that, I was starting out right there. <laughs> That's like when I started doing comedy right there. So I got a little audience and stuff, but it was kind of like got out of hand. Like kids started laughing and like getting all crazy in the room. Oh, because the they knew you from the podcast? No, hell no. This is way before that. And oh, then like uh -huh. the teacher would come over, what's going on over there? I was like, shut up, turn it The down. teacher was Joey Diaz? Uh -huh. <laughs> what's going on in here? <laughs> or, I don't care. Listen, cocksucker, all you guys is going to come up. I'm going to sit on one of you guys. Relax. I, Felipe, I think, am I wrong? that Did we have you on your first podcast appearance? The Champs? Yes. No. The Champs. Beauty and the Beast? What is Beauty uh, and the Beast? Beauty and the Beast was Felicia Michaels and Joe Diaz podcast. That was his podcast. I wish I had podcast. your memory. You know every single thing that has ever happened to either of them <laughs> when you weren't even there. Wait, does, does, does your audio pick up? A little bit. A little oh, bit. Okay. You can hear it. Okay, cool. Yeah, good, good speakers at the pad or good yeah. headphones. But yeah, so uh, that was your for, for second podcast in uh, The Champs. I just you feel, did too, right? listen, I don't know. I feel responsible for what's up, fool. <laughs> that was a badass podcast. Yeah, both man. of them are really both good. You guys, you guys, you guys had good like it was good chemistry and good questions and uh, the story rolled perfectly. But also, Felipe, you're like a the dream podcast guest. I mean, I know now I'm your guest, but you're like a dream podcast guest because you just go, you press record and then go, Felipe, tell a couple stories, and then like an hour and twenty minutes later, you're like, and cut. Good night, everybody. It's so easy. And also too with that podcast, you guys were usually doing like black dudes, right? And he was yeah. like the first one that was like non-black. Oh, did right? you break the color barrier? <laughs> <laughs> how'd you guys hook up with that like how'd you hook up with uh, Neil Brennan and start the champs I mean Neil called me one day and was like do you want to do a podcast and we were trying to figure out an angle and we thought at that time we thought you know podcasting was so white like it was so such a white world and we thought who better to break the color barrier than two also white comedians we thought if no, if anybody else no one will do it but the the whites need we were like dances with wolves you know what i mean but we well, thought also you both like have a fascination with black culture we do we both and and doug pound was the in were you there for yeah. the doug pound years doug pound. so each of us in our own weird wet, ridiculous foolish way we're like enamored of black, black culture as weird and fetishy as that is oh hell yeah so we thought well we know this is inherently problematic and yet we're going to do it anyway and by the time the champs stopped being made, I felt like it didn't need to be around anymore. It was pretty cool though because yeah, like, podcasts don't need to last forever. That's true too. But <laughs> what I mean is like our mission—not that we were like a lot of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like by the time we stopped doing it, people like podcasting had become more diverse and didn't need a couple of white boys to like be doing that. That so I thought it was kind of a cool arc. But your That's podcast sweet. influenced. Um, more people to do podcasts. I think oh, so, yeah. for sure. I, I think um, so. I was on your podcast, and I, I, I said stories about my life that I never shared before, like coming in illegally, uh -huh. right? And now I do it in my new special. Oh, hell but, yeah. Um, stories it, that you told it, on that? Yeah, your oh, cool. stories that I told on your podcast, I never told anyone, and people reference your podcast to talk about me in interviews. Oh, I heard somewhere that you said, no, bro, you heard it in the champs. Yeah. <laughs> Just call it the way it is. I'll bro. never forget your story about the... Uh, looking at the TV and going, oh, that's stand-up. So you go to like a second-hand store and buy a sports coat <laughs> with, with, with shoulder pads and then rolled, rolled the sleeves up. Like, Aww. oh, I guess this is what stand-up comedy looks like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's, all, he's like referencing the Reagan presidency. <laughs> it's like way past it. Felipe, yeah, were you man. always funny? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Shy, though, but funny. 
Like you knew you wanted to be a com- comedian. I knew I wanted to be a comedian when I when I saw it when I saw it on. I heard it on a record. What was the first record? Uh, it was the uh, Russ, my brother Russell, whom I sleep with. Uh, Bill, Bill Cosby. Cosby. Oh, Bill Cosby. The, the episode that um, sketch where him and his brother are arguing about him being adopted. That's why you have those um, General Hospital blankets. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's an album that Bill Cosby yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about Bill Cosby these? Days? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know, to? man. Well, uh, let's let's talk about it, man. I think. Uh, well. What do you think? Well, because you're, you guys so, never you're so about influenced it? by no, him. No, 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 not too much, right? We never really touched on it, right? No, man, we don't. We're not like all current eventy. You know? How about well, when he is, went hey 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 as he was exiting uh, the court? That was just like a victory hey <laughs> hey. Did hey, he really hey hey hey? Yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> what like, a pig! Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, he did it. Yeah fool. <laughs> like uh, yeah. Like he, as he's oh, walking fun. out there, what are you gonna hey, say? Hey, hey, hey. And he's all walking Throw back in there. Man. Yeah hey hey hey. So it's like Whoa. you know like a victory hey hey. Actually, hey. he said he turned her back around and went rape rape rape. I swear. He did that. That's a weird idea. And he gave away the cane That's and everything. That's funny. Huh? It's still <laughs> gross, too, because it, was, how funny it, is, it was like Kaiser Sose style. Yeah, but it's still, he starts walking it's still creepy, because even if you're thinking, hey, 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 it's Bill Cosby, or hey, 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 here comes that poisonous Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> you can even think, he got off on this one, right? This was a criminal trial. He's going to go on another one, but it's either 60 women that are telling the truth, and it sucks, or 60 liars, or whatever it is. Right? Or 40... And 20? No, I don't right. know. Who was saying yeah, that, that, that thing, two though. of the people didn't understand? Two of the jurors apparently were so dumb didn't they didn't understand, understand. the concept of uh, a reasonable doubt. They didn't know what that meant. That's they, why he didn't But that's get... a prosecutor's job to explain that to them, right? I mean, who, I don't know if that's true. But... Well, one of the problems with the trial is that the man was being accused <laughs> by liars that are trying to bring down a powerful brother. You no, know, one of the problems with the trial was that he wasn't on trial for the 60. He was on trial for two. For, yeah, for one or two. Yeah. And so you have to leave out of your mind the the 60. Right, and so everybody the facts of that particular case. Of that case. And I don't know what the and facts are. And who knows, are. maybe the girl right. was we a little there. off or her I, story didn't add up or She also received a settlement before. And she had gotten a settlement before See, that? So it's like that's hush money, right? Now you're coming back with this thing. Yeah, but, but I mean But still it's hush money because right. he did it. So now right. <laughs> And the statute of limitations didn't run out on it, so now she has a case, right? And it's, it's also, it's not like that's, it's not like that's legal. It's like, Your Honor, after I raped her, I gave her hush money, so I cannot be accused of this crime. I think you're a... Just to let the allegation go yeah. away or, you know. Did you guys ever see that clip of Cosby saying that he puts a little, um, something Spanish in Spanish fly? Yeah. Well, that's from right? the 60s, from though, right? The Larry, no, not the stand-up clip, the Larry no, King. Right, that interview, he but goes, I thought it was... You put, they said... I can't do a Cosby impression, so I'll do this. Joey did. <laughs> they said that you put the the drop a drop of a drop of Spanish fly. Uh, it'll fit on the tip of a needle. Put it in her drink. Hello America. That's what he said. <laughs> Hello America. I mean, that's an Damn. actual clip from an interview. And yeah, Larry yeah. King is just like, <laughs> <laughs> I've done it too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of upsetting that he didn't get in trouble. I mean, he's ruined, right? No matter no, what. No, but he. He's also like an old ass man. They should have got him when you know when the shit was really cracking, you know. Right. And then his wife's come into his defense, you know, calling out all the people. Like a soldier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would same, probably come to your defense most. You would if I, I raped sixty to. women. <laughs> sixty women, you would but still how be many like. Are, are accusing them five, ten? Yeah, like so. And well, isn't 60. it like? Are they all wow, and are man. they all represented by uh, Gloria you, Allred? Allred? No, I don't the, think so. No. W- do you have opinions on Gloria Allred? Well, I just think I mean she just goes where the money's at. You know, she ain't gonna sue a dude that don't have any cheese, that doesn't have any fame. You mm-hmm. know, that's well, it. But I mean, not that t- Cosby's a target. I mean, there's something there. Why didn't they build but, a case with the sixty or something to try to make it more statue of a limitations? Because of the oh. Rolling Sixties. Oh, right. <laughs> oh yeah, the Rolling Sixties. They they put a kibosh on that. Yeah. <laughs> So that's now, what, that's Natasha what started her comedy career as a member of the Rolling Sixties. Did you Wait, know that? Wait, I'm sorry. What is the Rolling Sixties? Okay, that's okay. good, right? Plausible <laughs> deniability. She doesn't want to let you know that she knows. What is that? It's like a crip. The so crip yeah. gang in yeah. uh, oh. Watts. The yeah. Rolling Sixties? Yeah. They're from the, I'm, the, I'm a West Side baller. That's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I made a mistake. Yay, yay. Yeah, man. <laughs> Were you guys both in gangs? No. <laughs> That's so racist. They no, I wasn't racist. Was it? No, was it? He just I mean, I knew gangster kind of and stuff, but I didn't like... He just like... did some kind of call. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah, 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 yeah. Is, 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 is Mac-10. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't 
don't know. <laughs> oh, man. That's probably the scariest rapper out there. Now, oh, let me yeah, ask you guys a question. Were you both in or... gangs or are you illegal immigrants? Which no. one? No. Do you have knives? Just, I thought he We've was never like been the in Rolling gangs, either of us. A-A. I was. Look, you were a crew. He or... wasn't a gang. He was doing a I was call. jumped in late, though. I was jumped in when I was 19 instead of 13 years old. Let's get up now. Uh, got the muscle. It hurts a little more when you're 19, huh? Yeah, man. But I was, I was like, um, you know, like, you know, like, I was in and I was out. I was only there like when there were free drugs. The good times. The good times. <laughs> then I came back to do bad stuff like shooting somebody. I would leave. Fuck that. <laughs> you would slink out. I would leave. I was still here with the, I was still here with the homegirls. They. <laughs> he would, then, as everybody left, Felipe would be like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and then there was time to, when he would jump other members in, you know. I would join in to the jumping in and find some fool oh, guy at the mad. very end. Then he'd say, What's up, man? Batman, you want to get jumped in now? And I had no choice. So I just punched the little guy next to me real hard <laughs> to let him know I'm down. I busted his face open. Then I got jumped by everybody. They were stomping me on my head for I like. Got, I was in a gang. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I, was in a little, I was in a little white boy gang called. Uh, P A G, the pure adrenaline gangsters. That's what they called it. Yeah. It was, and as I say in my book, it was a name that was so so weak. It should have been called P H A G, the pure hardcore adrenaline gangsters, or fag. <laughs> but anyway, there was a. I got. I had so many initiation rituals to get into that pathetic like wannabe. It's like a little white boy gang, and we all thought we were like tough. And I had to swallow a goldfish, put a cigarette out of my arm. Like uh, Malibu's most dude, wanted. Drive by exactly sleepovers, right. bro. What's that? <laughs> drive by sleepovers. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, fool? You ain't invited. <laughs> no, we would do drive bys, but our moms would be driving. <laughs> Watch a porno together, gang. <laughs> yeah, Wait, it's that me, kind of thing. Let me ask you, Felipe, since you've been in a gang, because I'm curious about this, because I know someone who's in, who's like a 50 year old in a gang, in a motorcycle gang. Birdman. <laughs> But what's too old? Like, you shouldn't be, like, over 30 and be in a gang, right? Hell it's, no, man. It's like, well, there is a... Well, the funniest thing I've ever heard was Corey Holcomb once said, motherfuckers in L.A. is 40 years old and still gang banging. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good impression, too. That is fucking hilarious. And they're still 50-year-old gang Yeah, people, I see right? people Representing... at my show that are, like, 50 years old and they're, they're still gang banging. Wow. Like, if they're... shit goes down, they'll be down to do like, shit. Like, even the little baby is gang banging, bro. <laughs> Full mad dog. That's every sad, bo- man. Every bottle. <laughs> That's so sad, though, to be a like a grown grandfather and still think that gangs are important. To still be like, oh, my block. I'm like, no, man, you're a senior. You're in the AARP. That's your <laughs> your block. Your block is what you should walk to the end of, get winded, and come back. It's a mentality, yeah, you know. He he shoot, he's shooting up medicine now. <laughs> <laughs> shooting up fiber. <laughs> Wait, that's a good bit. Like old gang gang bangers he's shooting up Sh- insulin. This fool is shooting up insulin like yeah. a soldier, <laughs> holding up the block. Gotta stay alive to represent. He's donating blood now. <laughs> the transfusion section. Where'd you I grow mean, up? that's a good premise. Where'd you grow up, um, Natasha? And also, I did not mean to imply you were in a gang. I thought oh, you no, guys were like good. speaking of, like about like the six mid. What are they called? We had a rolling the mid sixties. <laughs> the mid sixties is the gang I that, that guy's in. He's in his. He used to be in the in the rolling sixties. Now in his, he's in the late sixties. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, fool? We, were, we had a yard sale, right? Where we're, we moved, Lisa Saturday. and I. We moved. To, we got all our junk from inside the house, and we. We let our fans come in and buy it. Wait, you guys had like a fire sale and yeah. let your fans buy your stuff? That's crazy. Dude, yeah, we put it on a podcast. People showed up. And there was a woman, a woman who bought that desk. Uh-huh. You know, I thought she was a nice mom, whatever. You sold it to them? <laughs> yeah, I sold it to 10 bucks. <laughs> and I still have my merch for it, 5 bucks to them. And I took photos. But this woman who bought the desk, she looked a nice lady, man. They looked at her arm. She had the big old gangster tattoo on her hand, like mm. my crazy life. Mm-hmm. She had the three dots. What's that called? A placa? A placa tattoo. Yeah, she had, she I had just look like though. this. I'm from PAG, man. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I know all about placas, but my placa, it was just an ice cream cone. <laughs> Wait, so she she was like a nice lady and yeah. she had the gangster? And she had a gangster tattoo and I didn't want to ask. Was she an right? old lady? She was like 38, 6, 37. But looked nice, huh? Yeah, veterana status now. Yeah. But or like, like just a square now but it's still it was bright because she was a white lady right and she, she had it on i was like what the that's fuck? why i always Gangsta. yeah man to not get that shit removed still ready. a hand tattoo must be hard to remove though it's like the, what it's the three little dots what is it for, for Maybe the loca my crazy life my crazy that's life. a one two three me yeah. vida loca yeah interesting yeah man you have one rodrigo mean tattoos 
Nah, no. Not even one? Nah, nothing. Moshe? Nah, no tattoos. Hell no. What about you? That's it, man. Big oh, you thing. do? <laughs> you have one? You have I one. had this. You had, had the three? The, the little bat. I had the three right here. Yeah. But it was a mistake, man. It was, there was people next to me getting real tattoos. So you had and to I get a little something? Homie, get me something. <laughs> and you put three dots. And I went, ah! And I ran. Well, no, I had, a, I had my baby mama's name back here. Then I, then I'm Gabriel Iglesias. He paid for it to get removed. I was on Sunset. Because he was oh, jealous. Because he started dating her. Yes, he was jealous. So fluffy. In Sunset, I got a big old yeah, bat over there. Wait, Gabriel paid morning. for that to get removed. Yeah. Why? Because he just thought it was bad. He thought it was bad. But you didn't want it to. I didn't want it either. I think you were talking. Like, I'm gonna get this shit removed. Let's go get a tattoo, Rasa. Does yeah. it hurt as much to get it removed? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was once with a girl who. Uh, her whole back was covered in the grave of her dead father. That was the tattoo. Whoa. So if you're ever fucking her doggy style, excuse me, Natasha, forgive me, but I have fucked girls doggy style before you. And you would be looking at her father's grave. It's I'm crazy. trying to focus, but I'm reading a eulogy here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm we, trying, I'm we trying have the same birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to add to your family, and I'm looking at somebody that took away from it. I you were with, trying to get her pregnant, circle, Mosh? No, I'm just doing a bit, Mosh. Natasha. I, I would women, never get I have her tattoos, pregnant. And I look at the tattoos, fuck, I didn't get along with this fucking gang right here. <laughs> <laughs> and what's worse is that right when I was about to come, I saw two eyes pop up on the grave. <laughs> what are you doing with my daughter? He has risen. <laughs> Don't come on me, dog. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come on me, dog. That's the only qu- thing he has to say from the afterlife. Hey, uh, don't come on me. You two had the uh, the uh, Tom Jacuzzi show. <laughs> yeah, coming with Tosh. I love that show, the man. Ju- oh, another Wait, great idea. If we do idea. more, will you be a guest? Hell yeah. Hell. Oh, another great idea I got for you, Natasha. Fuck it, eh? I'm gonna I'm buy a jacuzzi and then write it off as a show. <laughs> <laughs> I did do that. The best idea. Put it like, running through the business. What's a good idea, right? Oh, hell yeah, dude. I would do the same fucking said, shit. said, I'm going to fucking buy a Monte Carlo and call it Monte Carlo Podcast. There you go. <laughs> the one that I drive Eddie, the Eddie came up with a, with a bus. Another good idea. Yeah, dude. I'll oh, Eddie that Ift? Show. Eddie Ift. The bingo bus? So when you guys thought about that, I said, wait a minute, Lisa, we could cut off this whole section of our, of our house. That's true. And write it off as a fucking business. Natasha yeah. and I, we started something called the Cocaine Podcast. We bought a kilo of cocaine and wrote that <laughs> shit off. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, Joy Diaz was there. <laughs> Sam with a little that, key and shit. That would be a good way for you to break your sobriety. Coke? <laughs> Just the Cocaine Podcast. Just, uh, Are you all sober right now then? I've been sober for a long time. How long? Oh, okay. 22 years. Oh, wow. wow. Nothing? No weed? No nothing? No, no. What were you doing? Nothing? When I was, like, I was just a kid, you know, I was like being a little PAG boy. And uh, He's not crawling went, out of podcasts. I went to rehab when I was like, you know, 13, 14 years old. Popping those so. flint of vitamins. Yeah, man. I <laughs> used to shoot up Flintstones, up, and now it's insulins. Uh, I would, yes, I was a ju- juvenile delinquent more than anything else. I just look like this now. I look like a little dork now. But if you'd seen me when I was 13, you would have run screaming. And That's what kind of drugs were you fucking with? I mean, y- you know, acid, weed, meth. Oh, okay. Moshe could have been in that movie Kids. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly That's what I was picturing right now on my face, Casper. Oh, yeah. I have AIDS, too. I have AIDS. That's what a weird... Oh, I'm sorry, Natasha. I was a crazy-ass way to close the movie. Crazy-ass kids, man. Yes, yeah. Kids, that was me, 100%. Watching that movie felt like watching a group of my friends. Yeah, those those drugs were hardcore, dude. I thought drugs were so lame when I was young. Is that true? I thought that, like, beer was, like, for fraternity guys. I thought drugs were for losers. But I was still cool. Like, Mm. I feel like I was very lucky. To be cool without drugs? I thought the way she felt, too, like, oh, man, beer is for losers. After you smoke pot, bro, you can't be my fucking friend. (laughs) I felt that way, But then at 19, you know, when I I started doing drugs at 20, late, I said, wait, man, I've been missing out on this shit. (laughs) (laughs) On beer? You don't no, seem like a drug drugs. guy. Uh, pot, but I mean, I didn't try it till I was 18 anyways. I was kind of afraid, but I was always rolling joints for dudes that were older than me when I was 14 to, the, to 18. And then How come? Because they were in a band that all, hey, dude, roll this joint. I was like, fuck it, break it up and shit. Oh, roll cool. Up. And they would, you would give them cornrows and stuff like that? Oh, not about all that, but <laughs> roll nice little bombers and shit, nice little doobies, you know? That's how I learned how to roll. That's interesting. Yeah, man. It was a punk band, right? Yeah, Voodoo Glow Skulls. Oh, that they're they're famous, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, or something. You were like they're they're a little like uh, you'd hook up their equipment and he stuff. Like the bat, yeah, he was, was like the bat. Yeah, I was like the bat boy. I ended up uh, working at the record store, and then I was just hanging out when they were practicing. Just went in there one day, and then just one day you, know, you want a job, you're already hanging out here anyways. Where oh, are yeah, you from? It. Riverside, California. Do you want a job rolling yeah. our joints? Yeah, and that was it, dude. That's how I learned how to roll. 
Wait, so is that like a thing you have to learn how to do? Yeah, if you want to do it properly. Rodrigo, well, I don't want to brag, one. but don't roll up the best blunts. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, you're really good at it. Yeah. 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 And then that's Obviously, the that used time. to be his He's job. got that voodoo glow skull skill. Yeah. <laughs> voodoo glow He blunt. did the voodoo glow intern, and then he became <laughs> a professional. <laughs> then Snoop Dogg hired someone to do Yeah, the back of, I heard during the Up and Smoke tour, he had paid a brother to just roll joints. So that's Hilarious. all he did. That'd just be a blunts. badass job. That's so funny. Yeah. I hung out with Snoop once, and he had just like a cigarette case just like full of blunts. Like Ready to go. Just ready to mm. go. Yeah, that fool smokes nonstop. It's so funny to me, too, because he doesn't smoke cigarettes, I don't think, right? No, he doesn't. But it's hilarious because he smokes like 50 blunts a day. It's like, dog, you smoke cigarettes. <laughs> He's yeah. smoking into- 50 tobacco leaves a day. <laughs> He's turning into a blunt. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a blunt right now. <laughs> yay, yay. Don't you oh, think it starts to stop its its effect? It does. It's got to. Yeah. I've the already felt it in myself. Like, like, there's no way Snoop really gets high. This anymore. is how I know pot is bad, or it, 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 it's an addictive thing, is because now when I smoke it, I'm like, I didn't smoke enough. Oh, I didn't yeah. smoke enough. It I doesn't get you as high enough? anymore. Did I smoke enough? I need to smoke more. Like, I never used to think that when I would smoke pot, and I think it just wears off. I think when you start thinking like that, you got to start smoking pot in places you shouldn't smoke, to, smoke you know, so, so, <laughs> feel, to feel paranoid again. Or you want to <laughs> add the paranoia back. Yeah, like, like yeah. smoke a joint and then walk into the library real fast. Yeah. And start asking questions. <laughs> um, Go to the NSA. Fuck with your own head. <laughs> so then you can feel like you're stoned again. There's a reason I'm paranoid. Get real high and walk into the Mexican consulate and ask for another passport, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and realize, when you walk in... I realized, you know, like people. I realized my Spanish is not good enough to wa- have a conversation with a professional Mexican man. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you mean he's a a Mexican man that's a professional, or he is a Mexican man for a living? Yeah, like I, I no, could like, uh, like, like, yeah. like, like yeah. gardeners. I'm a professional Mexican. <laughs> yes, but in my spare time, I'm a black dude. Yes, <laughs> like gardeners, you know, pool cleaners, electricians. You can talk to them. Oh yeah, but Home Depot. I got that Spanish. Oh, down. I got it. That it choppy, it's a high level. level. But when I show Spanish. up, you know, there are places like the Mexican <laughs> consulate. Oh man, I'm lost, bro. It's all proper. <laughs> <laughs> They're like conjugating verbs. They're using, hell yeah. <laughs> using big words. Like, I'm, Male feminine. Telemundo. They're asking me questions like. So they're asking me like questions. Like, so your comedy premise in Spanish? No, 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 premise. No. <laughs> I don't even know how to say premise. It's premisa. I don't even know. I have to look it up. Wow. What, what do you do on Telemundo? Was it that? What's that? G- Gigante? No, I did a, 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 a show that's even worse than that one. Bro. <laughs> Me and Joe Diaz did it, bro. They paid us 700 bucks in cash. <laughs> really? We they did um, El Platanito. There's some. Sh- oh, that's the one where all the comedians are doing it. They paid you right? in cash? That's funny. That's the one that, like, Should a I lot say of. That? Should I say that? No, it's just public information. You don't know, Natasha, these shows. They ain't no, they ain't no craft service. <laughs> no residuals? My grandmother is cooking backstage straight up. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. Your grandma got the job. There's She's... an old lady there with a big old pot making Whatever she's making, what is she Mexican making? goulash for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> a mix. Hey, it's better than Doritos. They're yeah. They record at midnight. They record at midnight. <laughs> yeah, that shit went on for days. We got there at 8, left at like Where 1 in the morning, dude. And Burbank, Burbank by the Burbank Airport. Why do they Around record the at midnight? Because he, he does like seven yeah. episodes in one night. Yeah, man. But is that the one where they bring all the, like, the, it's not Spanish-speaking comedians. Like Hannibal did it or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he did it, but he had like, uh, he had, I think they might come with a translator. Oh, interesting. So, so I want to do it. You could do it. They'll put you guys on. Yeah, I got an offer to do it once. but You it should so do weird. it. Yeah, that'll be funny. Yeah. The guy, the guy, he, um, Jimmy Kimmel is a big fan of the show. And sometimes he like he mentions him. Uh huh. He does like a Jay. Le- he, he he does like Jay Leno monologue, but dressed up like Homie the Clown. Yeah, he's <laughs> funny though, man. Yeah, he's, he's funny. funny. The show? El funny, Platanito, dude. el show del Platanito. This. Noches. Noches. He got fired from Mexico. That's why he's in America now. Oh, so it's Telemundo is for Mexican American. Is Mexican American television? It doesn't broadcast. Oh, I say in mostly Mexico? Mexican or Spanish speaking. Spanish speaking. Yeah. But it broadcasts to Mexico or it's mostly in America. Uh, I think it's said in Mexico uh, or here too in the states. Mostly too. here, but um, Platanito. He's like in the, like the BET. Of yeah. Oh, Pla- what does Platanitos mean? Little little little, 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 little banana. banana. That, oh, that's what I call, is a That's what she banana. calls my dick, actually. <laughs> the little banana. That's so crazy. That's not the needle. Yeah. 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 It's small, but it is yellow, though. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he's the really funny, The night of the little man. banana? He's funny. Yeah. Or he night he, with the he got banana, fired yeah. from his job in Mexico. That's why he, he, he did the real fucked what up joke. What did he get joke. fired for? Of a stand-up comedy show. Uh, he did a stand-up a sh- a, a joke that was very offensive for everybody. 
Um, oh, a was school, a, a, a school church or a, a school, right? Something happened with a, a bunch of kids. A got bunch burned of kids got burned, in right? A school or a building. Somewhere. And then he called. He he said, he said oh, "Wow, they got burned, man." We're like, they should call it Kentucky, Kentucky Fried Children. Oof. That's Oof. rough. So they but the show. at the time when he in said his the, defense, in his defense, <laughs> he said. At there the were time, herbs and spices. At the time when I when he said this joke, nobody even know was talking about the kids burning until I made the joke. Mm. So nobody. It wasn't that in sounds the news. like a defense you come up with after you get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. that was a good one though. <laughs> oh, he said, "What were they talking about then?" Like nothing. it was nothing. Missing... They weren't even giving it any airplay. Or they weren't even talking about it, all oh, the media outlets. I see. He's like, "I had to call them Kentucky Fried Children so that your minds would open." <laughs> and he gets away with real sexual innuendos that yeah. no one else does. Yeah, mm. he's very funny shit. Like uh, there's a there was LeBron James getting a finger up his nose by another basketball player, and um, Platanito said, "Look it, does this smell like your mom?" <laughs> <laughs> but in Spanish, it's funny, man. Chris said it's okay. <laughs> as long as you keep buying Tide, you're all right. Is it sponsored by Tide? Tide, Chris, oh. Colgate, <laughs> Coke. The loyal brand. Is that true? They're Latino Pringles. loyal brand? Oh, yeah. Coke, Tide, Zest. Interesting. Zest. Like the most like Fully quintessential clean. American. Yes. Like... More than Fabuloso, more than anything. You go to any Mexican home where I grew up, there's Zest. There's Zest Coke, fully clean, you there's mean? Tide, Probably. and there's um, Comet. Oh, yeah. But I use all those brands. And Ajax. Well, then maybe you're Mexican. Ajax. Think about it. Look at your wrist. Look down at your palm on your hand and see. Are there three dots? <laughs> Is there an eagle that says Echo in Mexico? <laughs> so you started stand-up in L.A. or Florida or New York? Florida. <laughs> you only have three choices, so you better choose one. <laughs> Florida. He's all like, fuck that. I'm yeah. from that state. <laughs> okay, man. So Chicago. Which one was it? I'm from Illinois, oh, but okay. not Chicago. And I'm from Rockford. And then I moved to New York. And then I moved to LA. And then I started stand up. So not yeah. Florida. Okay. Not Florida. <laughs> okay, you. Redondo Beach now. <laughs> Your three South choices Gate are. <laughs> or Oakland. Uh, yeah, I started Oakland. in Oakland I with, started with Lunell. With Linnell. <laughs> Linnell's funny. a little bit before me, actually. But. I always see her at airports. Really? <laughs> she didn't know, when we had, we had her on a podcast, she thought we were being recorded, and we got there, and she had makeup on, and thought it was her, gonna be the videos. lights. <laughs> oh, she had lights. She came with lights. Oh, she was all done up, huh? Sorry, Brown. We're just recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> she got all You're glamorous. not, though. You have this stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> what a jerk. This lady, is huh? new. <laughs> what is it? What, it's a live stream right now? No. Hell Little Johnny no. Five right here. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I started in San Francisco. Great place. Where did you start? Punchline, yeah. I started at LA, started here. Natural Fudge Cafe. <laughs> with the... with Br- the uh, Brian Holtzman, Freddie Soto, Jamie Kennedy, Cynthia Levine, Al Berman. I know all those people. Wait, did you start before 2002? Oh, yeah. Oh, I you've been like doing in, it longer than us. I, I started like in 96. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah but I had, a baby, cool. I had a baby at the time, so then I would quit and then come back again. Mm-hmm. But that was... Sports coat time. Sports coat time, yeah, bro. Yeah, father, father. Oh, man, I'll tell you, the first time I walked into the Natural Fudge, I met all those great comics. Even Alonzo Bowden was there. And um, the the host, Johnny Roberts, he said, hey, we're filming a show next week. Come on down, kid. I love you. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, I'm going to be on television? Because, <laughs> see, I didn't have cable. I didn't know, that. I didn't, I didn't know local access didn't mean shit. <laughs> So I thought, fuck yeah, man, I'm going to get a tape, too. It's on. <laughs> oh, it was so, a local TV cable access thing? Yes, That's Channel cool. 3. Do you have that set? A del- hell no. Natural you find that Fudge? Set. The it's Natural Fudge. Natural Where was fudge. that? It was on Fountain Avenue. That's the Dookie <laughs> Cafe. Wait, and that was a comedy club? It was or a, like a cool... Uh, it was like... a, no, it was a cafe that did punk music. And stand-up? And stand-up. Wow. But it mostly music. So they would have like a comedian go up, like Alonzo Bowden, and then like a band would show up. After him, and then what? He's putting down their equipment. Another comedian shows up. Once the band finishes setting up, they play a five-minute set. So you've been doing comedy for like years. Twenty-one years. Twenty-one years. Okay. But working as a com- as a working comedian since two thousand ten. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? What do you think of like the PC nature of everything? Like, don't you think things are getting more PC? Like, do you care about that since you've been doing comedy for so long? Well, I, I, I watch people like Platanito, and um, I don't care, man. <laughs> No, I don't. My jokes are not that hardcore, but I, I've had people take the microphone away from me. What do you mean? During my set. <laughs> what for? What joke? Because I said my brother came out of prison worse this time, 
Because I always say my brother comes out of prison as a Nazi, Mexican Nazi sometimes, real racist against blacks. Another time he came out of better thieves. But this time he came out worse. He came out a full... A, he came out a born again Christian. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as I said that, it got really low in the room. And then this fat lady went, "That's enough for Mr. Felipe Esparza." <laughs> Who, an audience member? This fat lady that paid me. <laughs> what what, what, what were you playing? playing? The Booker. That was it. What was, is it? Was she it said, a "You church? offended a a cons a a a, a city a clergyman, a clergy, whatever, <laughs> a city attendant." A, a, a st- LA City attendant. Where were you performing? At some private club and some golf course. Oh, somewhere. I got it. Got it. But they're, that is a funny joke. They were paying me 200 bucks, man. The, those corporate <laughs> gigs, man, they're the worst. A but golf course was, should pay you more than 200 That was the bad joke. But I had I had tags, you know, should let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> you took the mic, dog. I said, yeah, man, my brother blowing up abortion clinics now. He's crazy, man. <laughs> that would have won him back, man. <laughs> The clergyman would have been like, well, I like this Felipe character. <laughs> yeah, so that was one. You know, that was one. Wow, and I've a, never had a mic taken out of my hand. Another one was that um, when that Black Lives Matters came out, somebody had a meme and I reposted it and I said that, um, you know, it's cool, you know, Black Lives Matter, but when the, when the Mexican guys do get caught, we don't give a fuck. We just say, well, he was a gangster. He should, he should die. And then everybody got offended. I don't see why that offended anybody, Felipe. And then everybody got offended. <laughs> Even cart- Mexican, Latino satirists who write cartoons got offended. Mm. I don't understand why would you get offended if you do cartoons. But it wasn't really. I don't like comedians going after other comedians when they get offended. Well, I don't think cartoonists are comedians. All right. they? they consider themselves yeah. just humorists. Or or everybody considers themselves a humorist hey. now. I, I, I tell you what, this, this cartoonist guy got offended, but his character and his cartoon is a Mexican, but he's a roach. What do you mean? Oh, he's a cockroach? <laughs> so you're yeah. saying that's racist. No, I don't think it's racist. I think it's racist if it, was, it didn't come from him. You know, but he, he, since he's Mexican, he figured it's okay. Was this meme something you came up with? Or you Hell just no, I just reposted it. <laughs> I'm not very intelligent that fast. <laughs> it would have took me a year to figure that joke out. <laughs> <laughs> and so you did people like just attack? It, it, feels, it sucks when people attack you online. They attack me, man. You know what you got to do? Turn your mentions off, then you'll never know if they're attacking. No, I don't turn them off. I know they'll tell I don't even know if people talk shit. I'm like, I'm, I'm blissfully ignorant. I'm just like posting into the wind. Another one <laughs> they got offended was this. This was, this was funny though. I reposted it. It's, it's a bunch of ladies hit me up. You know, it's very offensive. You should neck down. You're gonna lose a fan right now, like that. Uh, it was a little baby with a, a. He was drinking water out of the faucet, like crying. And the meme was when white babies eat hot Cheetos. I don't get what's offensive about that. <laughs> Who's Why offended? The there thing? was one lady out there that didn't like it, dude. They thought the baby was being abused and oh waterboarded. Oh, my God. <laughs> you no, know, you know, actually, I know that lady, and it's actually, it wasn't a lady. It's Chester Cheetah. He didn't want you talking shit about his product. <laughs> oh, man. People get offended with you, bro. Oh, I've been, I've been like, you know, I, I've gotten the mic ki- taken away from me, and I've been really? walked out of the club. Yeah. Just to that For black what? joke, right? Uh, well, the black joke I remember in uh, San Jose, I did the black joke, and uh, it was just like the um, the Jesus joke, and I two ladies. When, what did well, you we say? We don't know. We don't know your well, act. It was an old uh, dude. I don't even do the joke anymore. But how's it go? Oh, black. Um, they said that Jesus washed the water. No, no, Jesus uh, black. He turned water into Kool Aid. But it's also the part that I added. Um, um, he's all. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's walking up to the, you know, go get persecuted, get on the cross. And it's like a little kid's all, where are you going to be out today, Jesus? He's all hanging out. <laughs> and like these two ladies like got really mad at this one. You can't be doing that. No, they got offended because that's, that's uh, Jesus that. was black. He would turn the water into Kool-Aid. Yeah, but she, she said on the other part, though, that she was all, I'm a Christian woman and that's unacceptable I at this club. That, man. I hate that, man. And I was like, damn, I'm just fucking I hate it funny, when somebody, dog. you see somebody sitting there laughing at every joke you make and then you get to the part that they care about. And they're like, hey, I take offense to that i'm a christian yeah my like, whole thing is comedy were... so like you know let's bow over whatever you know but some people nitpick at what they like and they don't like yeah yeah and That's... make an issue you get attacked it. natasha not attack well i got attacked online by fur supporters or by um PETA. so i think that maybe they put out a because like i'll wear a vintage you. furs you know i have i love vintage clothes and if i see something that's warm. To be and fair, you did li- live stream the skinning of a mink. Remember, <laughs> that was a little bit. It was to a Facebook Live. You were there though. 
Huh? You no. were there? No, no. I'm saying they went on my I'm, Instagram. I'm oh. I didn't live tweet it. And I have never bought new fur, but it's just old stuff. And I like how it looks. And it's it's just my style. It's glamorous and warm and functional. So I, you know. But then they went on my page and were like, I have a rabbit. So mean. But what happens is as you get like more just, fame and stuff, like you're, you're more of a target and people like nitpick at what you do, you know, like anything that's wrong and often, you know. And if somebody jumps on you, then you get fucking three or more. Well, than I think what thousands. PETA does, because it was odd because Comedy Central retweeted some some picture of me in a fur. And then PETA must have sent that out to their newsletter their or something. Or whatever, sent all out of a blast. sudden, every single one of my Instagram pictures, even if it, I mean, there's none with fur. Like, so every single one of them was like, you're a piece of shit. I hope you die. <laughs> like, every single, had like 90 comments. So I had to go through and like, it was, it was really mean. Hmm? Um. Cat Williams, by the way, sells fur coats on the webpage. Yeah, <laughs> if anybody wants to know, like Natasha, if you're looking for a, a badass new cat fur will, coat, new yeah. fur coats. How They're much does he sell them for? Five those grand. Be- yeah, it's wow. a lot of cheese. Where That's he funny. he makes or he has like he has, a he has, he has, clothing love, line, right? He has a designer, and this <laughs> guy sells for sells cat will fur coats. They're white. They're beige and they're black, and he saw these Floor. real expensive alligator boots too. Yeah. I love the idea of him like at home just like knitting a fur jacket. <laughs> he goes to bed and like a, a group of little yeah, elves you that one. look exactly like him <laughs> comes out and finishes it. I was uh, working with uh, Mike Epps in Detroit, Detroit, Michigan, and um, there was a, a guy there with that has an exotic zoo in Detroit. And he rent if he rents out animals for birthday party, like if you want a kangaroo to show up sure. and fuck everything up, <laughs> <laughs> or an ostrich, or a mongoose, <laughs> set of mongoose anything you what want, a musk rat. <laughs> this fool, this cat. fool shows up. He went viral because he took a, his kangaroo to the mall and he was hopping in the parking lot. So this guy goes. Mike Epps sees that and invites him to the comedy show. Oh, I remember this. So video. there's two kangaroos. And we, we met yeah, one of them. Yeah, one was asleep. And one, one was asleep. He you brought were there two at kangaroos. The show? Yeah, the we show. were backstage. Like, as we were walking out, we are like, what the fuck? It's a kangaroo, dog. What? We just finished getting high backstage, him and I. and With a kangaroo? We like, saw the kangaroo. Like, whoa, fuck a kangaroo. So we started feeding him bananas, took a selfie. <laughs> fuck around now. Mike Epps takes the fucking kangaroo on stage. <laughs> you were there that night. And That's everybody's crazy. going, yo, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> That fool started hopping too. Yeah, it was And tight. he slapped the shit out of oh. Mike Epps. He took a swipe at him and missed him. <laughs> and he, he just ran off stage like, he fuck scared, that. He was scared on stage. He was oh, scared, yeah. But the fucking kangaroo was startled on stage. Scared, right? So, man, Peter went down on him too. Everybody. Yeah, he, he donated some money and he stuff had to, too, to get money. him off his back. And um, before I, I knew that he brought the, the kangaroo on stage, people were beating me up. Oh yeah, you they, fucking ass! I thought you were vegan, you fucking fat fuck. Yeah, that was crazy too. But you, you guys had to take down posts, or just like yeah. that way, you know, on Instagram, people stop fucking with you. You know, Peter's yeah. against pet ownership. Do you know that? <laughs> they are. Really? I didn't yes. know that. For, I know they're very extreme though. Dog? They're extreme. They're against pet ownership. They're against Petco. Are they? Are they all <laughs> against eating meat? Oh, for sure they're. But against they don't eating attack meat. people for eating meat. I think they do in a kind of theoretical way. But they, they target people because they want publicity. Okay, the only Chippewa, way they're going to get the point across P- is with Chippewa, yeah. Peter, they look for people that are vegan who look like Natasha, you know, like petite, you know, real That fits pretty. a model. Of but being someone vegan. like me, they'll never put me in their posters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking vegan. Where can I get a fucking poster? <laughs> nah, man, we don't need your time, You're man. vegan, Felipe? Yeah, Six fucking. Years. Right after I hung out with Mike Kaplan, I said, decided. <laughs> Well, Wait, what did Mike six tell years? you? Yeah. You've been vegan? You don't eat eggs or eggs, milk? Eggs, hell no, nothing. What about honey? <laughs> no. Fuck honey? Yeah, honey. No, fuck the bees. <laughs> yeah, fuck the bees. Huh? So what do you eat for like... Honey is very good for Because Mexican food is hard to eat. That's yeah, the man. one... No, that's, Mexican that's the food tough, is not... La carne not, asada. No, it's, it's all cheese. Beans, no cheese. Yeah, I can eat vegan at any Mexican place. Pretty good. Yeah, eat, but it's not although good. Although sometimes you eat the, uh, a bean burrito oh, man. and the beans are too good and you're like, it's mm. lard. You don't want to, no, no, no. I you don't want to know. You're exactly. <laughs> you don't want to know. He ate a couple chips sometimes. I'll, uh, all right, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> like I would take my wife to uh, this place in Boyle Heights called Allen B's. Oh, we know all about Allen B's. Oh, they're known for bean and cheese burritos. Yeah, don't so say that they have lard in their beans. Don't say anything about their but beans. But they, yeah. Lisa took it to the next level, you know, because she's from, you know, the Midwest. She said, can you guys deep fry that for me? And they deep fry the bean and cheese Whoa. burrito. Chimichanga. Wait, but hold on. How, how do you eat Allen B's now? I don't eat it no more. We don't go no more. Because oh. the cheese. So the what fries. do you eat? Oh, I go to um, Organics and Eagle Rock. 
and they have jackfruit burritos and I gringo. They're fruit. fucking good now, nah, bro. They, they hook it up. Uh, you would, you can tell, you can't even tell if they're chicken. I like that Alan B's place, man. That guy's so, the guy who works there is so nice. He he lives a two second commute from his workplace. He lives in the restaurant. <laughs> you got You got to go get because LA does not have good burritos. I find. But that is the best burrito. I See think. that? Natasha said it, people. Our listeners know Boyle Heights, Allen B's. I used to go to school with a kid that his dad used to work there. He's mm-hmm. the owner, and I remember uh, he was eating a, one of those one of those um, lunch burritos uh-huh. with a little plastic uh, and the oh, taco from the sauce, cafeteria. From the cafeteria. Yeah. And my friend Coco, he was the funniest guy in the school. He started fucking roasting that motherfucker dog. <laughs> He goes, what's up, homie? They ain't shit like your dad's, huh? The <laughs> <laughs> bomb ass feet and cheese, though, man. Fuck, I feel like having right now. I'm LA's never, all about go, tacos. Though. Yeah, little tacos. Taco With city. the corn, tortillas, and oh, I'm she not doesn't into know. it. You don't like tacos? I want you're a on San the, Francisco what, burrito. You're on the What's the Up time. Fool podcast saying you don't like tacos. You're about to <laughs> find what kind of, out you're, you're what talking real about internet San Francisco looks like. burrito? <laughs> I know what you're talking about. San Francisco burritos are amazing. You're talking yeah. about that place that with a good salsa, right? Papalote? Papalote is good. Papalote is real good. bro. Papalote, that, you haven't been there. That's no? that's good. There's a place. La Vic in San Jose, too. I've never been there. There's a place called, my favorite burrito is very controversial. Oh, is this resonant? I don't know. But Gord, <laughs> there's a place called Gordo's in the Bay Area that is, uh, that's, that's the best burrito in the world. You just can't get it here, though. It's like, it's not flavorful. I don't know what they're doing. But they're focusing on tacos. Okay. Burritos are an American invention, right? Yeah. Yes. So burritos aren't you classic gotta, You gotta go like some places, like you're right about Allen B's. That's a basic combination burrito. That shit's good. And then you can choose either, it's bean and cheese and you choose red sauce or green sauce. Red right. sauce. Yeah. Red sauce, good. Moshe likes the green I sometimes because it's hot. I fuck with both. You know what you also could do there, man? You, you could get a you could get a, Merry Christmas. a bean and cheese burrito with a hot dog in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know about that, huh? That's uh, disgusting. That is so, bomb. That's that is so good. <laughs> Would you rather eat that or the deep fried one? The I, I would, I'm skipping the hot dog both. One. Oh man, a hot dog? A hot dog? Yeah. Do they chop it up or is it just no, straight just in? <laughs> 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 that. That's what they call natural fudge right there. <laughs> that's a, that right there, bro, that's my hood. That's where I, where I used to go, where I grew up. Right there, where I, where I, where I used to be a, it's a, a movie theater. I saw Godfather 3 there with my baby mama. Wow. Damn. <laughs> what, have you, what do you think of, have you heard about these anti-gentrification forces in Boyle Heights? I heard of those. They're getting going, crazy, right? They're, yeah, they're going. They're against... anti-Felipe too. No, really? They, they don't even mention me on the Boyle Heights page. <laughs> Why? What do you do? I mean, I, I should be <laughs> mentioned on that page. You should, should be, be Boyle Heights Royal. I should yeah, be yeah. on the East LA page. Yeah. I should be on the Boyle Heights page. Boyle Heights have favorite it. son over here. Honoraries. Yeah. They, gotta, they gotta go far, You should bro. have one of those Mayan headdresses and stuff, like on a mural. You should be on a fucking bakery calendar right now <laughs> <laughs> with my feathers with my wife right there white girl holding the waiting them no why do they hate you i don't know a lot of the, acti- the activists over there uh choose a certain type of latino who yeah they still they still they they they, 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 uh, they choose a certain type of latino to root for like maybe like a, a latino hipster looking latino yeah. they root for that like they like nothing against el magical but they'll, they'll <laughs> run for Al Madrigal, who is not from Boyle Heights. To, to, and is Al Madrigal like me. a prince in Boyle Heights? No, no, no. Let's just say he's a Latino they root for. Okay. Wait, but what? What is? What is it about you that they are hating on? Because I am, real, I, I am everything that oh, they're against. Real. Well, in what way? Because I'm, I, I talk like I'm a thug, you know. Yeah, but oh, you, you're I, a product. I, I dropped though. out of high school and you're an exact product of it. It's not. You're not I, I'm, the guy, I'm the guy who made it with. My, without doing it their way, without well, going to college, well, without fucking. Well, the guy that made it, that oh, wasn't so supposed like to a, make it. It's like a Latino intelligentsia saying this is the proper way yeah. to be an activist. That's interesting. Yeah, they they are protesting the. It's kind of interesting because obviously it's a coffee it has, shop it has right? nothing to do with me, but I'm curious because I think gentrification is a really interesting issue because. It by the time you start fighting it, it's already happened and it's yeah. too late. You but they don't go to the it. city council meeting, the planning commission meetings, where they're gonna you know let you know what's gonna happen five right. years after. That's you know that's already a late but, issue. So this, they went to these uh, white uh, art galleries. This is the, the part I thought was really interesting. They went to these white art galleries because the moment the art galleries come, it's the, over. shows over. Right. And they chased them out no, of man, the neighborhood. They as, left. They closed up shop. These poor white entrepreneurs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> as soon as you see the ch- the Chinese girl and the white guy and the baby, it's over, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Here comes the 
I was here comes like, a private school, bro. We were talking on Sunday because you did a show in East LA with Lisa about like uh, all those people that say all that shit. But and there was somebody that said something contrary to their thing that they're uh, you weren't doing anything to beautify the neighborhood before. Yeah, bro. So you, what are you, you crying were, about You were now? sweeping the streets you know, before. You're, you're not when helping. There, when there was a forty ounce in front of your yard. You didn't fucking pick it up and throw it in a trash can. That's what's complicated. You know, you're gonna get mad with these white guys having that a coffee fucking shop garage actually, sale. That coffee shop also has a Latino owner, right? Are you one talking about the, the the butterfly one? Yeah, is, I don't know which one exactly, but I've seen it on the. Page. The, yeah, because Oakland is a. I feel that I have a very complicated relationship with gentrification in Oakland. Obviously, I'm a white dude, so I, it's like mainly I'm gonna be like I just won't comment on this. But I also grew up in a neighborhood in in a city where people I got robbed so many times growing up. I there was it was <laughs> on a certain level like it was fucked up, you know. And like now I go back and I'm like, damn, this is so different and fuck like weird that. These gentrification forces have come in and displaced people, which is a really sad story. And at the same time, it's like I like walking around and feeling a little safer in my in my old neighborhood. And like I like that there's some like vibrant restaurants. And sh- it's a complicated issue. It's like nobody that has an opportunity is going to drive in a shitty car when you have the opportunity to buy another newer one that's going to work like, better and be more. Efficient. And also, what are people supposed to be? Where are people who move here supposed to be buying houses? Right. Oh, that's it's like other you can thing. only buy a house in like a white area. Right. The idea that you move from Iowa and you're like what's a white neighborhood that's where I want I only want to live in the white neighborhood <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, for Beverly Hills like, here, here I am man a Mexican American man they've been living here for 20 years in this shitty neighborhood and now somebody's offered me 900000 Should I say no? Are you fucking kidding me? Right. Yeah. I'm going to fucking buy it. I'm going to say yes and move to Riverside. Or yeah. their landlord, you know, the guy <laughs> yeah. that owns it. I mean, but it it's is, his right, you know, I to feel capitalize bo- as well. I feel, both, uh, obvious, I feel both ways, too, because it is a sad story when a historic community can't afford to stay in the neighborhood that they created, right? Right. But it's also interesting because, you know, like Oakland, I don't know what Boyle Heights' history is. It was a Jewish enclave before that's that. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Every Cantor neighborhood used to be, used to be a cycle. thing, yeah, then yeah. became another thing. Yeah. Oakland, the same thing. Was like a, It was an all-white city, and then it became a majority black city, and now it's becoming this weird gender. But the truth is you can't stop gentrification. There's too many human no, 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 beings. But maybe we could like help it involved. so like historical things don't... That's real. Don't break. Don't don't ha- have to be t- you know gotten rid of. And you could take the taxes from a gentrified neighborhood and put it into housing in the neighborhood that that pe- so people don't get pushed out. And maybe businesses could get a tax break who've been there for a certain amount of time, you know, so they don't have to close down or something. Right. Just way to work we, with well, it. One program could be you get a white person who just moved to Boyle Heights and you give them one of those hot dog burritos and see what they think. <laughs> you know, it's like welcome to the neighborhood. I'm and then, staying. <laughs> <laughs> is that not on the menu? You it's just on the have menu. To ask it's for there. It? You gotta like find and it. It's, in there. Wien, it's called a wiener burrito. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I definitely know that. Lupin's have a taco dog. Man. That's bomb too. But every time have? I go to bar, uh, a taco dog, but that's at Lupin's on the other side. What's a taco dog? Show. It's just a tr- uh, corn tortilla wrapped around a hot dog, but deep fried. Oh my gosh. Hey, yeah. with the uh, with the uh, guacamole. Poor man and, uh, food. Yeah, yeah. Dude, bomb. Or it's also the way you just tell your friend you want a taco. You say, I want a taco dog. I want a taco dog. I want to know what Felipe eats for breakfast, though. I'm sorry. I'm just so enamored by it. Oh, a malto meal. With with. I ate malto meal today with syrup. Cream of wheat. Yeah, cream of wheat. And bananas. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so cute. and then um in the after yeah, last night for dinner we have fall, right? We have fall. We have fall. Uh, and, what are your um, favorite vegan spots? Um organics in LA and yeah, okay. Burbank are the best. And I like um Tony's Darts away. Tony's here Darts away here in Burbank is pretty Tony's good. Tony's Darts? Yes. What is that? It's a bar and they have hot dogs. Well that sounds pretty good. Vegan hot dogs? Vegan hot Yo, dogs. Yo, we drove by this new vegan um ice cream shop right right in the complex where Doomies is. Oh, I love Doomies. There was a. We went to that ice cream place. There was a line. It was like, it was like two blocks long. W- yeah, it was like white people Christmas. It was like <laughs> it was. I guess that's Christmas. But anyway, it was the longest line I've ever seen for vegan ice cream. Mm, that was Damn. good. You eat at Doomies? Yeah, I've eaten at Doomies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had the Big Mac? Yes, I've had the. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You feel like shit after. You feel real bad after. <laughs> yeah. Real disgusting. I'll take a hot dog burrito. Hot that. dog a burrito. Wiener burrito. Sure. Jalapeno poppers are good. Oh, yeah. He's something nasty, man. man. When I was in Texas, I got to tell you guys, because this is nastier, might be nastier than the hot dog burritos for you guys. This white lady, hillbilly lady, <laughs> she ordered a, a snow cone. And guess what flavor she wanted? Pickle juice. No. <laughs> 
smells good. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't dude. like snow cones, so like I think I'd like a savory one. Ugh. Fucking it's like a martini. Give me a pig juice. Tur- Let me get a turkey brine and uh, <laughs> one turkey brine snow cone. And, uh, and I'll, you know what? I'll do a doo-doo cone as well. Just <laughs> squeeze out some diarrhea in that <laughs> and hand it on over. But it's like having a martini or something. Right. That's interesting. What's the nastiest kind of food you like? Is there some like deep, deep shit that you guys grew up eating? I, I, um, well, well, that's a lot of stuff. Because we used to eat brains, mm. called brain tacos, oh. and tongue. You know, I was looking up cholesterol because I, I had high cholesterol a few years ago. And I was looking up the different cholesterols in the foods. And like bacon would be like 80, and like steak would be like 90, shrimp would be like 100. Brains was like one thousand two hundred percent. Like ha- very Are you high serious? cholesterol. All oh, cholesterol. You serious? Crazy. Damn. Yeah. It was wow. Insane. It was such a jump. It was. It was crazy. Damn. Brain Organ is meat. pure. Mm. Brain is pure cholesterol. Damn. I used to eat cow cheeks. Oh yeah. Cow cheeks. I oh, had... when I was in um, we were in um, we were actually in um, I just remember now, a kangaroo when we were in Amsterdam. We were in Amsterdam together? Yes. I can't remember anything. He's like, I puked in your room in Amsterdam. <laughs> we, we, we were was at, we Oh, were... we did that one show. Um, what was his name? Raymond is Lot. Yeah. Raymond is Lot. Raymond. 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 Raymond is Lot. That, that was one? a show where I got out there, and because they you, you do it in English, yeah. but they don't speak great English. No, they speak, well, the whole show is Dutch, and then your part is English. Yes. And so I remember I got out there, and my opener was, I don't think women are funny either. And this woman in the front row, this is a live taping, she goes, if, they don't, if she don't think women are funny, why is she on stage? <laughs> <laughs> During my taping. Like, they just don't understand irony or sarcasm. I mean, they do in their own language, obviously, but they didn't understand. Like, they're just translating, like, <laughs> like literal. It was not, not good for me. Did, did you, you, did did you, you do well? Yeah. Oh, man. But I, I, I got fucked up afterwards, though. I disappeared for a day and I missed my flight. <laughs> there was a... I don't know if you noticed, but you don't remember that day, the whole, the whole time we were there, but I was there with somebody and I ended up going home alone. <laughs> you were there. People were looking for Felipe. Yeah. Wait, this is was... starting to ring a bell. Was Dove Davidoff with, David off with us? Yeah. Okay, because right, I went twice, so I'm was trying Jasper to Was Jasper Red there? No, Jasper, Jasper Red wasn't <laughs> there. It was and me. And he disappeared, too. I was gone, bro. I disappeared. And, um, Do you know what happened to you? No, I, I ended up going to some house, and I was, like, smoking heroin. <laughs> yeah? With yeah, a wiener no. in it, though, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you no. smoked heroin and then just, like, passed out for a couple no, days? No, no, I just didn't, I forgot a lot. Of, I didn't know what time it was, and <laughs> by, by the time I come back, everything was, they were looking for me, bro. But you Damn, did your taping. Dog. I did my tape after the tape. Oh yeah, I always do after the taping. Put man. in your work. I put in my work first, then I get crazy afterwards. <laughs> How is smoking heroin? Oh man, I don't remember. I was too drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I was up a well, lot. how was getting drunk? Man, I don't remember. I was on too much acid. It was weird. I thought that um, uh, th- they gave me the heroin and they gave me aluminum foil and a straw and a, and a match and then you go for it, man. You party. So they, I, I, really I, I put the, yeah, man, I was weak. I thought I had the aluminum <laughs> foil and the, the lady she put like the, a little piece of my heroin on it and then she lit it and then she goes now inhale. So I was inhaling with a straw and then she goes, okay, you got it now. All right, you do it. So I was just doing it myself. I threw up right away. Immediately I threw up. Damn. But then I don't Who's remember. Who's this lady? She immediately wanted you to be the only one smoking heroin? You were handing money to people and they were going crazy. Yeah, she was, hand- I, she was a lady that brought me to the house. I met her through another guy I met. So we were just partying the whole day and the whole night. Getting locals, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they were dirty motherfuckers, bro. Really? Yeah, we, man. We just bought antiques in Amsterdam. <laughs> I mean, we had a different experience. We went to Van Gogh's house and yeah, bought we went to a Van Gogh's house. house too. <laughs> yeah. I went to a Van Gogh's house also, man. It was awesome. Is it worth it to party like that? Hell no. <laughs> what That's a like waste just, of time. Yeah. Too much time. My brother would spend my time watching Netflix and being like that. You could do both, though. A lot of people smoke heroin and then watch Netflix. You ever done heroin, Natasha? No. I, no. I feel like I'm the type of person, like, that's where I would draw the line is when someone hands me tinfoil. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just not my vibe. Like, I'm not going to do that. Here's a straw and tinfoil and a yeah. lighter. Go, go party. <laughs> that's, where, that's where I'm just kind of like, it's not for me. And also, I don't like opiates. They, I took OxyContin once, and it made me, like, I couldn't stop vomiting. My eyes. You snorted it? No, someone gave me a pill. Oh, that you, happened to me did once. Did you bite it or you swallowed I, it? It was like half of a <laughs> pill. I don't know, but it was like I was driving home 
And I remember I had a fur oh, wow. coat on, and I would like kept moving the fur to like vomit out the side of the, <laughs> out, out the side of the car, and it was just awful. And then I've taken a Vicodin before and just woke up on the bathroom floor. Like I don't, I'm not into that vibe of things. Most of them, man, who are Mary here? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. and then I did. I mean, and then I did cocaine once. I mean, those are like I've only done all of those what, things. What once. was your coke experience? I mean, it was very typical. Like in New York, someone handed me a tray, and I just started laughing and blew it everywhere. And I was with all these Israelis, and they got mad. And yeah. then I then well, I felt bad. Well, they were mad about the money. <laughs> <laughs> then I felt bad, so I took some. Oh, and then I was up all night long. I remember I read uh, No Exit and like two other plays by Jean Sartre. <laughs> And then Sartre, is that how you say it? Sartre. And then I woke and I Do just call it didn't John? sleep. John? Isn't that his name? John Sartre. What's his name? I think oh. it's John Wick. Jean Claude? Jean Paul Sartre. Jean Paul oh, I'm Sartre. Sartre. Jean Paul Sartre. <laughs> I read these plays. John Sartre. I read these plays and then I was like, I just couldn't sleep, and I woke up the next morning, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm addicted to cocaine." Or I didn't. Even... <laughs> I was like so like in my head about it that I just never did it again. That's her problem, <sighs> is that she because she went to Catholic school and it was raised Catholic. Every time she does a vice and she likes it, she then immediately has a thought of, "I shouldn't have done that." But you shouldn't do cocaine. Uh, cocaine, sure, but like, and you shouldn't do. You should not smoke pot. heroin. Even when you smoke pot, You should though. smoke pot. But when Damn. you smoke weed, you a little bit go like, mm, I shouldn't do that. Well, I mean, I don't think you should smoke weed all the time. I would like to wake up every morning and smoke weed. Me too. <laughs> do you smoke anymore? There's kids around now, man. Wait, but do you smoke anymore? Yeah, I do. You smoke pot? Yeah. Is that it? Just pot. Do you drink? No, no, no. Just pot? That's the only drug? Yeah. It's Mushrooms? the best drug. Sometimes if Rodrigo hooks it up, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Occasionally. Wait, do you do mushrooms? I've tried them. I've done them. You don't seem like a mushroom guy. No, I like the last one I had. I didn't like it though. You're more like a oh, mushroom yeah, a bad pizza one? guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're cool. I think, and you're like in a good little element, good little energy. Going you like on. you like ecstasy? No, I never done that. Stuff. Never. No, because I heard that something it leaves a hole in your brain or some shit like I mean, that. Anytime like, yeah, you hear and a then rumor you're depressed like that. for three days yeah, after. Like, anytime uh, you hear a rumor like that, there's bullshit. a weird anti-drug man at the other end of it. Going, <laughs> yeah, they believe my lies. I heard someone say once, and I've always thought of this: avoid white powders. Yeah, interesting. Really. And that's like, you know, even flour, sugar, uh, heroin, <laughs> cocaine, <People>. MDMA. <laughs> but like, people. you know, all of it's not really good for powder, you. Powder, the, the movie sense. Powder. Natasha Avoid right it. now singularly help people get away from cocaine right now. Man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not going to try it no more. Fuck that. I don't want to read no fucking books. Little PSA right here. <laughs> but ayahuasca, you done that? No. What Would is you? that? You don't know about that? Just gotta go That's take an like, experience somewhere in the yeah. in, what? In the That's, jungle. It's just like Peruvian, like you know, like the Peruvian native. Um, na I don't. What are they? Like peyote or something like that? It's it's, it's mega peyote. Like oh, more than peyote. That. You go to Peru. That. There's a shaman. They you give vomit. you a, a tincture. You, you vomit, vomit up your ego. Yeah, you vomit your ego up. You have these visions, and then you come out of it like you know a different person. Yeah. <laughs> you die a lot of times. In Not the, literally. No, but you you have to experience. Someone's piping you, and you didn't even know that. What do you mean piping you? Fucking you? <laughs> right now, I'm just thinking about 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 about. about uh, it was great. I was doing. Oh, ayahuasca. you done it? No, no. I just like your vision of uh. it. Like, it was great. I went to Peru. I took ayahuasca. I was just brutally raped for about 17 hours, and I came out a different person. <laughs> The whole time I'm thinking so about um, Cotton, bro, from King of the Hill. When they put him in that sweat tent, and everybody turned into Japanese people. <laughs> <laughs> he started hallucinating? Yeah. <laughs> I would do it, though. I would go to Peru really? and do that. Yeah, why not? Like fuck yeah. around and get bit by a mosquito and shit. I don't want to go all the way over there to do it, though. Can they bring yeah, it over here? Huh? You can do it in Burning Man. You can do it in Malibu. Oh, really? Yeah, they okay. do it. They, they have these gatherings in Malibu. But it's a whole ritual, and it's a whole, like, you have to have, like, a shaman. Did you, so you can't do it without, then? Oh, the shaman. Yeah, I mean, you man. can. <laughs> But what's, what's the point? shaman? What's the point in doing it without without like a the priestess full experience? or some shit yeah. around, or like priestess the least? Me, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be some fool that looks like Martin, dog. <laughs> we have a comedian friend we had last week that's into that stuff. What is he? Ricky. 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 But he ain't the guy that you want to be on you, man. Okay, break the he's, more, <laughs> he's, he's more rapey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Wait, Spit is, on it, Rosa. Is that like a type of yoga? Yes. Reiki, Reiki, you know, you don't a, want that. I don't Reiki want it. Ricky is a kind of uh, <laughs> energy. Work where they put their they don't touch you they just put their hands around you right yeah like it's crazy it's fake oh, God. it's for black women mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like Kabbalah and shit or what? um but breaky break have you ever done DMT you ever smoked DMT no what's that well DMT is a drug Molly. it's it it is the Molly it's not Molly no DMT is the is the active psychoactive ingredient in ayahuasca 
and it's the concentrated version. And you know when you do mushrooms or you do acid, you have a, like you're in this room, but the room is moving. When you smoke DMT, you're not in this room anymore. You're in a cave somewhere with a, you know. A, is that a the de- one that lasts like 20 seconds? It lasts like you five could, minutes. And you you can put it in a bong hit, right? Yeah, and you have a full hallucination. Like you're Yeah, I heard gone. it's intense. Yeah. The mouse did it, dog. He said it was badass. Who's Dude. the mouse? <laughs> Man, you guys have cool friends. You got Martine, the Reiki practitioner. You got the mouse. The you got to hang out with these that guys. That clown. Boy. The mouse took him to Dodger Stadium, bro. <laughs> with other <laughs> mises. He's, he's, one of the, he's one of his mice. <laughs> this fool. Yeah, but he said it was crazy, dog. It was like in a whole tunnel, dude, going, dog. And he said he farted, fool, and the shit lasted like 10 minutes, dog. He had a 10-minute fart? And then this other fool was doing DMT, too, because this other fool was hooking it up. And he's all, dude, I fucking hurt. Heard something on the other side of the capsule, dog. That yeah, was crazy. I don't want to do it because I don't want to fuck, fuck around and not come back. Dog. Yeah, you don't want to have a 10 minute fart. <laughs> but you will come back, though. That's the thing about it DMT. They call it the businessman's drug because you could do it on your lunch break. Really? Yeah, you're like, okay, well, I'll be right back. You go into the parking lot, smoke DMT, meet God, have a crystalline entity, touch your third eye, and then you come back to work, file some more papers. What's, yeah. what's the one where you see elves? That's DMT. I, I did that one. Yeah. No, you didn't. I really? saw elves. You did not. I was. It was in Molly. I did MDMA though. That's what Molly. What are you talking about? I saw elves. I had a hallucination. Bitch, of elves. you saw elves. <laughs> 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 but I don't know what drug it was. I think it was MDMA. Wait, wait t- tell the story. I just remember closing my eyes and seeing all these like Keebler elves but working. But what were you doing? Talk to me about. It. It was probably a bunch of shorter comedy, Martin Rizzo, Nicky Guerra. <laughs> Some shorter comedians, yeah. I said Brad Williams. They Cat just Williams. seemed like they were in a bad mood. Cat Williams, Brad Williams. <laughs> they were just guy. elves in Wait, a bad mood. How did you do it? I just took a pill. A pill. With someone and I was at two bunch palms and then I like lay down and then I just saw like like all these Keebler elves, they just were like working. Hey, hey, hey. I don't think that's DMT. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Those are cookies. And they, <laughs> they were like they were like in like a very primitive you know, like almost hobbit. <laughs> no, like hobbit looking. It was looking. before they figured out how to make the, t- the toe of the shoe curl up. It was old school. I'm just saying they were outside and it wasn't, there wasn't like. That's cool. Who are you with? Technology. Mother- no, I'm just kidding. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> so you have touring together? Yeah, we're going on tour together. Yeah. Me and Natasha. You have one of the Europe tour, huh? No, we, we want was, to though. Next year. That was, that was, the, that was the, uh, the honeymoon then, huh? Last year we I was did the honeymoon. following your Paris book live. Oh yeah, last last year we went Paris on honeymoon Night. tour, West Coast edition. So this year, this summer we're doing the East Coast and the South. Though. So on July nineteenth we start in New Orleans, then we go to Atlanta, uh, Miami, then we go to Montreal, Boston, Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Minneapolis. Wow, you have such a good see. This is why people should be sober. You have such a good memory. Uh, July and August. Well, yeah, July and August. We start July nineteenth. We're and we going end Jul- to August sixth. Yes, and we also give uh, relationship advice yeah, we during do, our show. We do stand up and then live relationship counseling. Someone has gotten married from our show. Yep. Um, we really bring people together. It's almost like I mean, we we do our own sets. Like Moshe will do a set, I'll do a set, and then we'll come out together and. Um, you know, talking to us really acts as a catalyst. If you think maybe your relationship's in trouble, if there's a little thing you'd like to address, yep. come to our show. But well, you ask questions here. And, yeah. if, and and make a make a make a romantic holiday out of it. Are you if you having don't relationship live, problems or... oh no, I'm good. Oh, I'm okay. it sounds like a yes. If you okay. live in yeah, Florida, yeah, yeah. come to Miami. Yeah. You know, you know, we might not be coming to your city because I don't want to go to that many cities. Right, right. But we have it's it's but a fun show. Why don't you come to us? It's a fun show and we help people and we make them laugh and it is really we don't really help people. It's mostly for comedy's sake, but it's fun. We do But bring, we have helped people. We bring That's couples the thing. on stage and we and we fuck with them and it's it's real fun. We fuck with them. Yeah. Well, what's the name of the tour? It's the Endless Honeymoon Tour. <laughs> the Honeymoon Tour. You guys yeah. have an LA date? No, we did LA already last year. Maybe we'll do it again. We could do it again, but no, we're we're, uh, we're all over the country. I'm I'm excited about it. These would be fun. You guys going to shows. Yakima, Washington? No, it's all all East Coast. All East Coast, my bad. Yeah, we're going to Miami though. That'd be fun. We're going to Miami, New we're, York, we're doing oh, Brooklyn. Is we're, going, we're going to these different cities. We go to the most uh, densely populated people of color neighborhoods, and we bring an all white audience in, and we show them around the real estate market in the, <laughs> in the neighborhood, and sort of awesome. get to know the neighborhood. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it. it's really fun. Like we're the we are the invading hordes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to have a joke about that. My first special, I bought um, gentrification. I remember that. I said, um, my, cause my, cause I remember my near, my room was changing by my, my my where I was living at, and I said, don't be no, no, don't never gentrify my neighborhood, cause I do the, my own graffiti outside. I shoplift people. 
I mug people because I want my four bedroom apartment to stay at six hundred bucks a month. Uh huh. That's real. <laughs> I was living, man, at, at a good spot. Everywhere I lived, I was like the youngest guy coming in. There were a lot of Latino couples. And I remember when Lisa was trying to find a spot, we don't hire, we don't rent to white people. Yeah. Really? They said that, they to, said you? that yes. to you. Well, Ivan told us. Yeah. Ivan is Gabriel's assistant. He's a friend of mine. He said his landlord doesn't rent to white people. That's interesting. Another one. Is that th- bad? They didn't want to rent to her because she was racist. divorced. It is That's racist, weird. but is it bad? I don't. It's interesting because the the other option is <sighs> rent to whoever and then know that the people of color. Are going to get pushed out. Also, so it's rent like, to it's someone a weird who seems moral... good, like a good a good tenant who can who has a job who seems cool, yeah, who's going to be respectful. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. An artist. <laughs> Gentrification is such a complicated topic because both sides you get fucked no matter what happens. Either you either you act out of fear and and fright and and bigotry. Uh, on the one hand, or you allow your community to get decimated economically, and but, neither are good options. But some of them don't know, and they they celebrate. Like I know I want uh, a a girl that I grew up with who still lives there. They finally built a Carl's Jr. in the neighborhood. She was about to cry. Because she was so happy. She was so fucking happy. <laughs> Waiting for that famous I, I, star. I don't huh? have to catch two buses now <laughs> to get to get a. Because the only Carl's Jr. was uh, in our neighborhood was in the industrial area by Sears. By the factories, that was the only one that was there. Damn. So now there's one actually in the hood. Two buses to get to Carl's Jr. Yeah, and she was happy. She was, oh my God. <laughs> Carl's Jr. All we need is a Target. <laughs> the answer to <laughs> her dream. <laughs> they were happy when a 7 Eleven moved in because they don't know that 7 Eleven attracts homeless people. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had a joke when I said when they opened up the Whole Foods at um, downtown LA. They were interviewing homeless people to see who's going to beg in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> what, kind of, what, 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 kind of, what kind of art can you bring to our Whole Foods? Well, I'm missing one limb. <laughs> Let me see your sign. You can tap dance. What's up, fool? Do you have any, any other dates you guys want to promote? Oh, yeah. Well, go to MosheCasher.com or NatashaLegero.com for tickets to our shows. And try to get them in advance if you are going to come because yeah. they'll sell out. And We're excited. We're going to Boston. That'll be a fun show. New Orleans. Boston. I love New Orleans. That's where we got engaged in New Orleans. We're going back to celebrate our love. Get some <laughs> beignets at Café du Get some Mar. beignets. Hell, yeah. I'm can excited. you eat that? Yeah. You oh, can? So- They're vegan? Yeah, they are. They are. That's yeah, dough some water. in Baton Rouge, huh? We have somewhere in Baton Rouge, and there's a great place called the. There's a. It's a bit of a tourist trap, but they have a. They have a vegetarian gumbo. It's called the Gumbo Shop, and mm. if you ever go, they got a nice veggie gumbo. It's real good. Go ahead and get you some. I'm trying to get a <laughs> shrimp po boy. That's not vegan, but it's good. I had shrimp and grits the last time we were. Around. Yes, shrimp Aren't and grits. Aren't you vegan? You're not vegan. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah, maybe when you go to um, New Orleans, you cheat. Yeah. You have a show on Comedy Central. I have a show on Comedy Center called Problematic. We just wrapped our first season, hoping about our second season. But you know who knows? But you can get it on but iTunes. But check out season one. We did. I was on it on the, when we did it at the... Oh, yeah. oh you were on one of our test shows. You were yeah, so it was funny. awesome, bro. Cool show. Yeah, it's a... De- it's, we, we well, take the topics some good guys are so... Uh, we take some thick topics. Yeah, we like, take things like gentrification. You had, you had Ann Coulter on and talked about Damn. the alt-right. We talked about the alt-right. We talked about the dark web. One episode was the alt-right. One episode was the dark web. One episode was, is the internet making us stupid? One episode oh. was... Uh, uh, was cultural appropriation. One episode was uh, Islamophobia. We, we we went to some... You, you we, went there. We, we went, go we there. there. <laughs> we do go there. And, and we had another the, one where what Nona was on, it was two, two, um, two liberals, I guess. Two, one Democrat right. was like, yeah, we should work with the Republicans and get things right. And the other one said, fuck no. Right. He was hardcore liberal. That guy was cool. Yeah, it was left versus left. Left you, versus you left. You like the left guy better than yeah. Guy the Branham, who was on Hillary Clinton's side. That's the bald guy, right? Yeah. No, I like the other guy. Yeah, yeah Josh cool. Androsky. But you didn't yeah. say that then. That would have been cool. I, I don't think. remember. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't th- thinking that well. Because, but... because the joke was, not the joke, but the, the premise was to get someone like Felipe, who sort of doesn't yeah. really take doesn't strong really sides, doesn't care or whatever, see what he thinks of these two. Who sways hot... Felipe? And it wasn't even <laughs> dealing with the Republicans. because well, The Republicans are out, right. It was like the it future of the like left. It was just like the future of the yeah. left. Yeah. Anyway, it's called Problematic. Problematic. And it's available. You could you could get it on the uh, Comedy Central app. And then Natasha has her third season of her show coming out. Drunk History, no? 
No, it's called Another Period. But it will Another be. Another Period. But season three will be premiering with Drunk History on Comedy Central. But you've been on Drunk History. I've been on okay. Drunk History, and the director of Drunk History is the same director for our show. Mm-hmm. So there is a connection a there. Period piece. Yeah, period. Quick piece. question, dude. Yes, sir. Are you named after Moshe Diane? The no. Uh, no, okay. Moshe Diane's named after me. Uh, <laughs> no, Moshe. He's named a, after Moses. Moshe is a very common Jewish name. Oh, okay. and so we're both named after Quick Moses. Quick question. Are you named after the Pesh Mode? <laughs> no. I look like I'm in Devo, I think is what you're getting at. But. Uh, uh, no, Moshe Diane is is the other fam- the uh, I'm not not Sam famous, but he's the other known Moshe. Right. In the world. Okay. Right on. Yeah. General of the Six Days War. Yeah. He's a, you know s- that's a he is the model they say uh, for the Raiders guy. They say oh that yeah, guy yeah, is Moshe uh, Diane. Totally. I've heard that before as well. Yeah. You um you were on a on a show that I used to like that's not on no more. Let me I'm, guess. Let me guess. True TV. No. Okay. Another, it's a cartoon actually on HBO. Okay. Okay. Oh, Life and Times of Tim. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a yeah. badass, badass show. show really, it's that Fucking good. Fucking love Dude. that show. I feel We're like sad. I, 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 I watched a few and it was it was really good. And I liked what I liked about it is the very um, kind of uh, how would you say it, lo-fi drawing. You know, like yeah. it's just very like not even three dimensional. Kind of how they do South Park. I don't know what the exact illustrator term is. It was kind of like Kirby Enthusiasm, kind of. Yeah, it was chill, but it was a funny-ass yeah. show. Subtly, subtly funny, but it was cool, man. Do you know yeah. why it got taken off the air, what, what the deal is with it? Do you I hear mean, anything about it? I don't know. I mean, I wasn't on it that much. Okay. I, I think I was on it a couple of times, but I know people love it, and I thought it was really funny, too. It was um, hilarious. Dude, that one with that fool was talking about, he had that threesome. When he's all little with that little Aussie shirt. <laughs> oh, dog. <laughs> that shit was funny, <laughs> dude. He has uh, a new he has yeah. a new show and he, he it's on Amazon now but the guy who created one of the that pilots yeah one of the yeah, pilots cool. I watched hell yeah dude what's up fool dates coming up all right man July th- 10 p.m. no okay we'll start all over July first that's today Tucson Arizona Saturday at the Alba Theater with Paul Rodriguez Tierra Malo and War Whoa. get your tickets. July 13th to the 15th, Corpus Christi, Texas, at Mesquite Street Comedy Club. July 20th to the 23rd, Tampa, Florida, at the Tampa Improv. July 27th to the 29th, Des Moines, Iowa, Funny Bone West. August 3rd to the 6th, Levity Live in Oxnard. Also in August, I'll be in Brea and Milwaukee Minute. Milwaukee Minute. Where Milwaukee? I'll be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Check out Felipe's World Date at Felipe's World Dash Tour. Thank you, everybody, who showed up to our fat boy yard sale. <laughs> yeah, that show was cool, though. We hey, sold a lot of triple X. Was there it's, any bad things that happened there? Any any weirdos? A lot of fucking weirdos showed up. This Armenian guy, right? <laughs> Everything was five bucks. He was trying to bargain for four Dollar. bucks. <laughs> hey, fool, how about the quarter he gave you, dog, for that little ball? <laughs> he, he picked up a random ball off the ground that we were selling. He just gave me a quarter for no, it. No, this was said a dollar, and he gave me a quarter. Yeah. Like, All right, fuck it. Get out of here. <laughs> this, he just wanted to bargain. Then our neighbor, this old lady, she was fighting with a little girl over a toy. <laughs> Let her have the That's toy, funny. dude. She said, give it to me. Wait, I want to do this just to have this experience. You should, man. I'll get a little nutty. It, it was, we don't want, I don't want to stay there, but it was like, hey, take our jug and give us money. <laughs> we don't want to play for a, a truck. It was a lot of stuff up. they took. You still had a lot of shit after. Oh, you man. Can, you can rent a dumpster for like $100 for the week, and you can just put all that shit in a dumpster. But, or you could not okay. spend the 100 and make almost $50. You know what we did, though? Before, <laughs> but he still has stuff we, left. Before we left, we put everything out in the yard real neat, and then Lisa came out the next day, and it was all gone. Are you serious? They, they just came. It. Oh, you don't have a fence. They just came, went, right, walked right in? Walked right, they took it all. Hey, you know what? What they did needed. you want to happen with it? Uh, <laughs> I love that table. I had an old 50s table that folded. We had an old 50s table that folded. It was nice. Didn't want it People, Aww. we, and it's funny. We ended up giving all our clothes to this old lady who's gonna take her clothes to a third world country, Guatemala, for the poor kids. This is gonna be the funniest thing because what in that bag? There's a water, a Wonder Woman <laughs> costume <laughs> with red boots. <laughs> Somebody over there's gonna be. <laughs> That's it. It's gonna be La Señora Maravillosa. Yeah. She's gonna be fighting MS-13. She's like, this is how they dress in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> We're so full. Thank you very much to Hell our yeah. guests, Natasha Leguero and Moshe Kasher. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank this you, man. Fun. Thank you guys very Go much. Go check out their tour, fool. Yeah, man.